Hi, Dr. Jim Norman here. This video is going to discuss why some parathyroid operations can take 20 minutes and others can take six hours. The take home message from this video is that your ability to have a mini parathyroid operation is determined by the experience of your surgeon and not by the quality of your Sestamibi scan. When my team and I were first developing mini parathyroid surgery in the early 1990s, we used the Sestamibi scan to determine who could and could not have a mini operation. It was simple. If the scan showed a tumor, we could go in and take out that tumor, and then we would not have to explore for the other glands. That is the mini parathyroid operation that I helped invent. That meant that some people couldn't have a mini parathyroid operation since not everybody has a positive scan. As you will learn, that is not the case any longer. Everybody can have a mini parathyroid operation, provided the surgeon understands some of the concepts contained in this series of videos. My team has developed many of the techniques used for getting fantastic quality scans, as discussed in another series of videos. Years ago, we had about 85% of our patients have a positive scan and a mini operation, and about 15% who had a negative scan and needed a bigger operation. That was over 12,000 operations ago. The big eureka came after we had performed about 1,000 of these operations. It suddenly dawned on us that we and everybody else were looking at it all wrong. It isn't about the positive scan telling the doctor where the tumor is. It's about the true negative scan telling the surgeon where the tumor is not. Therefore, when we obtain a sesame B scan, we do not try to find the tumor like everybody else in the world. We usually do find the tumor because our scans are very good, but finding the one bad parathyroid tumor on the scan is not our goal. Our goal is to show where the tumor is not located, and then, by default, we will know where it has to be. This simple change in philosophy makes it possible for us to do a mini operation on every patient. As discussed in another video, even folks with a positive scan can have a second tumor. So knowing where one tumor is isn't much help. You need to know where tumors are not located, not where they are located. The best analogy that I have about the location of parathyroid tumors is to use my two teenage children, Allie and Josh, to illustrate the differences between the upper and lower parathyroid glands, and to illustrate that the parathyroid glands really can't be anywhere in the neck or chest. In some other videos, we used a coconut to illustrate the size of the space where 98% of parathyroid tumors are located. That is the classic teaching in what most surgeons believe. Now I'm going to tell you that this is not completely true. Parathyroid tumors can't be anywhere in this space they can only be in some very specific parts of this space. Josh is my teenage son. Allie is my teenage daughter. They both have their own cars and therefore have the ability to move about the city of Tampa, where we live, at will. If by chance they are not in their beds come midnight on a Friday night, I will start searching for them. However, even though they could be anywhere in Tampa because they have their own cars, and possibly anywhere in Florida, they're not. Josh is almost certainly at the video arcade, at Mike's, at Brian's, or at Stephanie's. Allie will almost surely be at Starbucks with her friends, the mall, at Ashley and Kelly's house, or at Steve's. So if I'm looking for my son, I would never look at Starbucks. There's no chance that Josh is at Starbucks. Similarly, if I'm looking for Allie, I would never look at the video arcade or at Brian's house. There's no chance Allie would go to those places. The upper and lower parathyroid glands are just like my daughter and son. They can only be in certain locations. Just like Allie and Josh could theoretically be anywhere in Tampa, they are not. They are in very predictable places. So too, the upper and lower parathyroid glands can't be anywhere in the neck or chest. They are in very predictable locations. We perform our sesame scans to be near 100% accurate in telling us where the tumor is not located. We want to make sure there's no chance your tumor is at Steve's house, that there's no chance your tumor is at Kelly or Ashley's house. This allows us to make a small incision in all patients and look only at Starbucks, Brian's house, and the video arcade. Before we operate on our patients, we know with over 99% certainty where the tumor must be located since we know where it is not located. 
When we perform mini parathyroid surgery, we do so in a very organized, predictable fashion. And we do the same thing on virtually every patient. We always identify the upper parathyroid glands first, as this is the most predictable parathyroid gland. In other words, we always go to Starbucks first to look for my daughter, because that is by far the most common place she would be. From there, we look at the video arcade, as that is the most common place to find my son. Just as I, as a parent, would never just start exploring our entire town, hoping to run into one of my kids, in the operating room, we just don't explore the neck, hoping to run into one of the parathyroid glands. This is where the experience of the surgeon counts the most, and why many surgeons can operate for as long as six or more hours trying to find a parathyroid tumor, while very experienced surgeons will tell you that almost every operation can complete it in 25 minutes. The surgeons that take many hours are making a large incision so they can search all over Tampa for my kids. As a parent that knows your kids well, you would never start searching through the entire town. You would search in very predictable locations in a very thought out, organized fashion. But if you only see your kids a couple of times a year, you would never really know where to start looking. Of the 13 parathyroid operations we do in a typical day, between one and three of them are re-operations on patients who have previous parathyroid operation where the surgeon failed to find the tumor. The vast majority of these failed operations took the surgeon between four and six hours. Some of our patients have had as many as four previous operations, each one taking a number of hours. Why? Because their surgeons are exploring the patient's entire neck, hoping to run into a bad parathyroid gland. They spend hours looking for parathyroid glands where there's no chance of them being. They're searching at the basketball court when neither one of my children play basketball. As you now know, parathyroid tumors can't be anywhere. They have to be in very predictable locations. All patients can have a mini parathyroid operation, even if they have a negative cystomibia scan, but the scan better be great quality scan. We discuss scan quality in another video, and you need to see your scan for yourself. If after all of your research and newly gained knowledge about parathyroid disease and parathyroid surgery, you do not like the answers provided by your surgeon, please work with your doctors for another referral. It is your health and you should make the best decision possible for you. As I always tell my patients, exploring should be reserved for vacations, not the operating room.